Okay, it's been cold. January, we finally had a cold snap. I'm down here on the south coast in Southampton, and we had this week from the Sunday the 14th up to Saturday the 20th, and look at some of those temperatures. that Down on the south coast, we had temperatures minus 6, minus 5, minus 7. We had a consistent sustained cold snap. We knew it was coming, and we have been preparing. In my last video, I showed you how I got on in December and that I saved £98 compared to my old gas boiler in running costs. But it was very mild, and so we were probably doing the heat pump a favour. What I want to find out is how did January really fare? And was it really a lot more expensive than running on gas, even though we had those sustained temperatures? And importantly, did it keep us warm? Spoiler, January got expensive. But was it more or was it less than a gas boiler? And in this video, I'm going to show you all my figures, as I always do, even the ones that don't show the heat pump in the best light. For context, our design temperature here on the south coast is minus 1.8 degrees. If you don't know about heat pumps, that's the outside temperature, minus 1.8 degrees, that they design the system to run efficiently at. So we know the heat pump should be able to run consistently at an outdoor temperature of minus 1.8 degrees, and it should be efficient and it should be comfortable. But as we've seen, we have plenty of days way below minus 1.8 degrees. And our weather app on our phones actually told us on this day, Thursday the 18th, that we woke up to minus 8 degrees, which was absolutely unheard of for Southampton down here on the south coast. Weirdly, I was kind of excited to push the heat pump and see actually how it would perform and really put it to a true test after having such a mild... November and December we didn't really get to see what the heat pump was really capable of if it could keep the home warm and how much it was going to cost to do so. Let's get into some of the figures and let me talk you through some of the uh, things that I found along the way. So this was our these were our figures for December we averaged a cop of 4.1 Compared to my last video, you can see I've minimized quite a few of the columns. I'm trying to streamline it for you guys to make it more understandable. But I have added on there the addition of the carbon. And the carbon intensity of the grid I take from this website here, electricityinfo.org. And you can see it will give us an average uh, carbon intensity of the grid. So we can work out per kilowatt hour how much uh, CO2 we're using. But I know everyone is more interested in the pounds and pennies and the efficiency. So here are my numbers for January. Let's go. Let's just tweak that slightly. There you go. 1st of January through to the totals at the bottom here. Why don't we just start off with those really cold days? So um, you can see that the averages for that really cold day on the 18th, we hit an average of minus 1.8 degrees, which just by coincidence is our design temperature. And you can see on that day, it would have been cheaper to run a gas boiler for both uh, the 18th and the 19th of January. And this isn't based on my old non-condensing 60% efficient boiler. This is in comparison to a modern condensing efficient boiler. And you can see that the overall cost over the month of January, despite having very cold weather and a cold snap, a gas boiler would have been £198. And you can see that our costs for running our heat pump... 163 pounds so we saved 34 pounds 77 over the month of january by running our heat pump even though we didn't achieve a cop of over four for the first time our cop our average cop for the month 3.71 and you can see that the average temperature there at 4.69 um i've stupidly screenshot this in the wrong place so you can't actually see what these columns are this column here is the electrical total input. This one is the output, heat output total. This is the uh, COP calculated by dividing the heat generated and the heat output by the electricity consumed. And then the cost is multiplied by the price cap rate. That, importantly, isn't actually what we paid. We saved a lot more money by going on Octopus Tracker. And I give that a massive thumbs up. I'll put a, uh, 
a link in the description. If you want to jump onto Octopus, you get 50 quid, I get 50 quid to feed my starving children. I should stop saying that, they're really not. This column is the kilograms of uh, CO2 that are produced by running our heat pump and the column next to it is if we were running a modern efficient gas boiler that's how much carbon it would emit and likewise then we have the savings so you can see here this is the cost saving we saved £34.77 that's price cap rates for both gas and electricity and you can see that we saved a whopping 473 kilograms of CO2. In a previous video, I ran through exactly how that's calculated and how you can work that out for yourself. I'm really happy that we've managed to save money. And importantly, did we stay warm? Well, I did post a few updates in the form of YouTube shorts to show on some of those cold mornings actually how we were doing and I'll try and chuck some of those into our into the video but maybe this will give you an idea I'm just in my work clothes and as you can see I'm just wearing my shorts shorts and t-shirt um, which is very typical um, we have been remarkably comfortable and I could never say the same with a gas boiler I never felt like we woke up to a cold house. We didn't go to sleep in beds that were, you know, we needed to spend a few minutes warming up. The whole house throughout the whole period was extremely comfortable. And in fact, on some occasions, um, with a little bit of solar gain or having quite a few guests in the house or whatever, we found that actually the house was starting to overheat and become a little bit uncomfortable. Here's another winter check-in for you see how we're doing through the winter can you see top left corner the outdoor temperature minus five degrees we've currently got air humidity of 45 percent we've just gone into the setback period so we're targeting 17 degrees it's showing in the room where the controller is it's currently 18.2 degrees it's a little bit warmer it's about 19 degrees in the other rooms that we've been using this morning like in the kitchen and what are we doing on the performance? Well, we are down at a cop of 2.6 this morning. I know as I woke up, it was minus 6. We're now at minus 5 degrees. So pretty cold, and we're taking a hit on the efficiency. That's bringing our weekly average down to 3.1 already. Two cold days in a row. And what is our flow temperature? Well, it's 23 degrees because we've gone into setback. But it works. It's another freezing winter's day. We woke up to minus 8 degrees this morning on the south coast. Currently showing minus 7 on the weather app. But Valent is, the sensor is recording minus 5.5 degrees. And we are at 17.5 degrees for some reason. Let's turn that off. Um, we've Our design temperature is minus 1.8 degrees because of how south we are. You can see that so far today our cop is just 2.5, but we are so far below our design temperature. Let's just have a quick look at what we did yesterday because we were down to minus 6 yesterday. So that was 2.9 with hot water and heating. Not too bad considering how freezing cold it's been. Flow temperature at 32.5. That's the quick little update for today. Um, what have I put here for you? A little visual graph on the right hand side. The red line is the average temperature and the blue line is the COP, so our coefficient of performance. And you can see that this uh, the temperature varied quite significantly over the month of January. This doesn't show the extreme lows or the, or the extreme highs. These are average daytime temperature over a 24 hour period. And you can see that our cop dropped here to 3.04, 3.06. Roughly speaking, about 3.1 is the break even. So, what date was that one? 3.1. We can just slide over to here and we can see 3.1. Okay, so the heat pump is 12 pence cheaper to run on 3.1, but at 3.06 the gas boiler would be two pence over the day cheaper to run. Now I have been plotting all of the 
information I've been getting into this scatter graph. Uh, along the bottom is the outdoor temperature. That's an average daily outdoor temperature. And then up the left hand side, you can see my average daily COP coefficient of performance. So you can see where the trend line is. Roughly, if I want to achieve a COP of four, the roughly we're talking about five degrees C outside. And so they're, they're all thereabouts. Of course, there's outliers and I'm still building up the data. This is only about two and a half months worth of information. But you can clearly see that if we want to achieve a copper four and a half, we're looking at, you know, eight and a half, nine degrees outside. And heading for a copper five for me is looking like it would probably be about 12 ish degrees outside. And then I should be able to achieve a copper five but I'll keep updating this scatter chart and I'll keep including it on my monthly updates. Previous viewers to the channel will uh, know that I've got this little uh, table here that I've created so here you can see that we averaged 3.7 over the course of January and that will approximately save us £400 in the year. Again those are just on price cap rates, the cost of gas, the cost of electricity from my area as they currently are stated. But the proof is in the pudding and this shows the whole picture of my whole household electricity consumption. So for January we use 798 kilowatt hours of electricity and if that's multiplied at the price cap rate that would be a cost of £229.74. Now because I'm on Octopus Tracker I actually only paid £159.44, saving myself £70.30. In the previous month, because Octopus Tracker was a little bit cheaper, I saved £71, and on the price cap it would have cost me £197, but it actually cost me £126.30. The great thing with Octopus Tracker is... You don't have to do anything with it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't need a compatible inverter. You don't have to worry about agile, agile timings. You don't have to uh, compromise your routine, uh, especially if you've got young kids. It's just brilliant because you just get the same rate throughout the whole day, but you're saving a whole load of money. As you can see, reducing my bill from 197 to 126 just by being on the right tariff or a better tariff um, is, is absolutely brilliant so I highly recommend you investigate octopus tracker tariff and as I say a link will be in the description so what have we learnt during this cold snap during this period of having sustained temperatures below zero degrees did we survive it yes did it cost us more than a gas boiler or oh, no not over the course of the whole cold snap and that actually surprised me because I did see for a few moments I saw our cop down in the twos and I wondered whether a gas boiler was going to massively outperform our heat pump but we found that actually it performed really well and so we were more comfortable than we would have been with a gas boiler shorts and t-shirt all around and we also still saved money. If we took that sample of the 14th to the 20th, and if I highlight that on my chart, the 14th to the 20th, you can see that although there's two days where we did spend a little bit more, you can see that the other days more than offset that. Even though on that day we're down to an average temperature of minus 1.6, we still saved ourselves 12 pence, you know. Take care of the pennies and the pounds to take care of themselves. I'm sure our grandparents were telling us all of that. So what's my conclusion? Heat pumps work. And I was so happy that we could actually put it to the test. Uh, weirdly, I'd love to see another cold snap in February and see if the heat pump can keep... Um, see if the results will repeat themselves and see if the, the heat pump will be consistent. And just as a reminder, the heat pump that I've got installed is the bargain basement, cheapest basic install from British Gas. It's not a heat geek elite. It's not an expensive installation. 
it was cheaper for us to install than a new gas heating system, including the tank and everything else that we did need at the time. So the capital investment was lower than our gas boiler. The running costs are lower than a gas boiler. It's more comfortable than a gas boiler. And so far, we are not seeing any downsides to it. Um, I put together a video. You would have seen there were some defrost cycles, but the defrosting was quite minimal. This is the view from inside from our living room window. And you can see why that all looks quite alarming. <laughs> it's quite a quantity of steam that comes out of the top there as it's doing the defrost. And the big plume comes out. There we go. That's what we were waiting for. Noise has been cited as another concern and I thought maybe when we get down to these sustained temperatures we might start to hear the heat pump as it's really having to work hard. Especially when we're seeing those temperatures down to minus 7 degrees for sometimes several hours at a time. And we're demanding 20, 19, 20 degrees internal house temperature. The heat pump is having to do some work. I thought maybe the fan would be going full blast, the compressor would be running flat out. We're well below the design temperature of minus 1.8 degrees. Below that temperature, it's an unknown quantity. And I think the low and slow consistent heating of the heat pump really helped the thermal mass of the building. And that kind of just helped the building kind of coast through those cooler periods from sunset to sunrise. And then although it was very cold, there was a bit of solar gain because we had quite clear skies for a few of those days, which led to the you know very uh, sharp drops in temperature overnight. No cloud cover to keep us warm. But the solar, the, the thermal mass of the building really seems to play a, a key part in helping the heat pump to just smooth out those smooth out those peaks and those troughs and we are super happy so uh, if you have gained something this has been interesting to you hit the thumbs up buttons like the video and subscribe to the channel I'm trying to put out a lot more of my real world experiences I'm just the layman I'm just showing you what is happening in our lives we are uh i've been sharing quite a few videos about my solar panel journey and about my heat pump journey and i want to uh, show you now how those two things work together and how they can marry up and how you can really make the most of a solar panel system with a heat pump anyway as i always say i've been waffling on for far too long so i will see you guys in the next video bye